Hello, this is a blackberry leaf. What does this plant have in common with ants? It's certain that some ants grow a fungus from these leaves. Leaf cutter ants have long become a kind of standard of an ant keeping. Like he was able to raise the Atta colony and immediately became a major player, who is looked as canes from around the corner. Greetings to all ant lovers on my channel. Today I bring to your attention the incredible story of one of my most valuable ant colonies leaf cutter ants. Enjoy watching! We immediately started talking about ants, even without unpacking, but it should be, but short. The ants came to me in December and this unforgettable smut started again. A gravy ball worth several hundred euros is back on my table. And most importantly, like the family is alive, but it's too early to draw conclusions. Let's take a closer look at the ants. For starters, I expected there to be more. The fungus looks tolerable, the little long-legged workers are running around. So far everything is going according to plan. In the meantime, housing for them is already made and is waiting for its new owners. I don't think it's worth explaining the nest system this time. In the old video about leaf cutters, we already touched on this topic. The only thing I have so far decided not to connect the compartment the trash can. Preparation Of course, I'm moist in the nest. On the advice of Western colleagues, I decided to replace this end with gypsum. Let's check how it works. All is ready. Now it remains to remember past mistakes and repeat everything. Go. I transfer the leaves one by one, setting them around a plastic island that acts as a barrier between the fungus and the wet plaster. By the way, these leaves came along with the ants so that they had food on the rod and maintained the microflora. With trembling hands I get to the most crucial and exciting moment. By the way, initially in the new nest I was going to make a dome around the fungus just from the sleeves, but in the end we came to the conclusion that an inverted gravy board would be more stable. And now such a tiny colony is in front of me at a glance. Another good sign was the eggs which stood out well against the background of the leaves. Leaves under which hid the most incredible and beautiful end I've ever seen. I didn't expect this moment to come again. How great! Just like two years ago. Through incredible excitement, armed with a spoon, I carefully transferred the fungus to a special place in the center of the container. In fact, leaf cutters are very calm ants, and with such machinations you don't have to worry too much. But despite this, all the same, at such moments you hold these ants as if for the first time in your life blowing off every speck of dust from them and not believing your eyes. Remember last time I compared them to ordinary messers? Well, I was wrong. Leaf cutters are quieter and work with them is much more comfortable. I think they can be compared with some kind of arenarius. Those who have kept them will understand. The last leaf? Yes, only one inch remained. The queen. I carefully move it to the fungus and our walk is done. I had to use tweezers to help her a little to get up. Why not visit the leaf cutters? Three days have passed since their resettlement and at this stage it's already possible to make predictions. The entire container is condensed and rightly so. Humidity should be high. I open the container, the humidification system curve come out, but doesn't matter. What do my words have there? The smallest workers are wandering around the gravy board, but they didn't touch the leaves that I gave them. Incredibly modest guys, 3 mm in length. So far I can't even believe that these are leaf cutters. But everything changes when you look under the gravy board. Oh, where is the fungus? Obviously it's not going so smoothly. In the stress of life the fungus constantly grows and constantly dies off. 
And here it's important that the ants after the transfer quickly move away from this stress and begin to grow it until it finally disappears. All the orange pieces on the fungus are dead and there were enough of them to understand that everything was already decided for the ants, although all is not yet lost. When leaf cutters are in trouble, keepers do the following. They buy a fungus from a person with a large colony of leaf cutters and plant it with their own. Fortunately, in the country where I live, there are many people with Ata Mexicana, and literally in a day I found a person who for a nominal fee helped me get out of the situation. Maximilian generously sent me a very modest amount of fungus and several hundred workers who arrived in a perfect condition. Thank him very much. Now I will temporarily place all this layering in a small container, because it's impossible to immediately throw everything to my colony. In fact, I didn't know what to do at all. Among my friends there were no people with experience in replanting leaf cutters, so there were many adventures ahead. I'm just pouring this incomprehensible substance into an impromptu formicario made of plastic and plaster. I will also give the ants strawberry leaves, let them move away from the rot and stress, probably they will start growing the fungus. Just in case, the man sent me a fungus in two versions, so that at least some part of it would reach, because it was very cold outside at that time. I also poured all the components of this box into this hotbed of leaf cutters. The ants are slowly getting used to it, but I have no time to waste. I immediately take a piece of fungus proportional to size of my colony. I scooped up quite a few workers with it, and I don't know how difficult it is to plant end of the genus Atta. That's why I bring most of them back. I should note that the leaf cutter's fungus is a very interesting spongy structure that can grow in such a way the chambers form in it. That's it. Ants live right inside this fungus, and catching tiny workers from there is not a simple task. In addition, I decided to leave a few ants inside the fungus to see the reaction of the meeting of two colonies. My ants have some kind of soldiers, so at the very least they can handle these babies. It's time to act, plus a very interesting experiment awaits for me, how leaf cutters from different colonies react to each other. Theoretically, when the ants get a healthy fresh fungus, they will immediately begin to cut the leaves and the mechanism will start, but all this is not accurate and I have to check this. Ants are ready. I just put a new fungus closer to the ants and watch. The workers immediately began to study it and at first glance everything went well, but it takes time to be sure. At that moment it seemed that everything was getting better, but it was still too early for conclusions. There was still a lot of fungus replanting ahead, but by this time I had already noticed a very important detail. Remember those micro-workers that I left in the fungus when I moved in, so with my ants they had no conflicts. This means that fungus donor supplements will become easier in the future, and in addition I will be able to actively add new workers, because I noticed that in my colony they began to gradually die. The most interesting begins. On these frames I checked the loyalty of the soldiers from the two colonies to each other, and apparently everything went smoothly. Now I'm trying to get the smallest worker I could find to join my colony. And as you can see, everything goes very smoothly. The guest is loyal to my ants, and they in turn do not pay attention to him either. As a result, he climbed into the deeps of the colony, where he disappeared from view. At this point I have prepared three more micro-workers and are going to pour them right on top of my ants. Let's try it! 
I must say that the leaf cutters work very confidently on plastic, and throwing them out of such a test tube is not an easy task. In other words, all lands that are naturally associated with trees have very tenacious puffs. Time has passed. In a couple of days the ants stabilize it, and at this stage it becomes clear that they has accepted the fungus, and McCallum near recovered. So far I don't see the growth of the fungus as well as cutting the leaves, but this process are interconnected and should begin soon. The corpses stopped appearing, most likely the ants died due to the lack of a healthy fungus and as a result of food. The ants seem to be more alive, but I will not stop resuscitation yet. I need to make sure everything is under control. This is how you buy leaf cutters, admire every ant and the fungus turns out to be most valuable. And in fact you keep it and the ants as it were help you with this. In the meantime I keep planting small pieces of fungus just to be sure. Ants have eggs, this can be seen with such resettlements. The workers carry this egg pack, which gives me very high hopes for the life of my leaf cutters. But as the fungus grows, new ants need to be added, because mine is already not enough to care for all this biomass. At this stage I don't stand on ceremony anymore, and just throw new workers on the fungus of my colony, they will figure it out among themselves. For example, here is another ready to work newcomer in my colony. As you can see, the ants immediately perceive it is their own and do not touch it. I don't think I discovered it first, but it was talking about such a phenomenon. If one of you decides to have leaf cutters, you will know that if necessary you can simply bring two colonies into one, just like that. In addition, my species Atta Mexicana can have two queens or more in the colony. These are polygenous leaf cutters, but in my case there was not enough finance for the second one, although one queen is enough for me. A little evening vibe. They are really big soldiers in the Donner lair, but we'll come to their settlement a little later. All castes are present. And while I made in the smallest ones, in order to mix the smells of two colonies, and in the future toss large batches of workers at once. By the way, keep in mind that leaf cutters cut perfectly anything. Of course, this is the work of their whole life. For example, small workers somehow leaked out of this container, naming through the hot glue with which I fixed the ventilation. And the anti escape is not friendly with moisture, so I had to leave with small leaf cutters running around the table. Evening time is the time to work with the ants, at least for me. This very moment, it seems to me, is filled with harmony and inspiration, and datas by coincidence are also very comfortable ends for evening gatherings. Everything goes as smoothly as possible. At such moments, I directly interact with them, which I really like. Such kind ends weekends. In the meantime, I filtered out a new piece of fungus and I created a new group of workers to share. And now I need to give the ants peace. After a week it was time to see again how my leaf cutters feel there. I must say that by this point I had already begun to notice the cut leaves, which indicate the correct approach to these ants. For example, here I find cores all over the nesting compartment, if they can be called that from blackberry leaves. 
While the colony is young, I quite often disrupt them by lifting this gravy ball under which moisture is concentrated. It can be seen that the fungus has grown, but so far just a little bit. Soon we'll see the real progress of the development of this organism. In the meantime, I'm not too lazy to continue adding small pieces of the new fungus. Yes, just in case. And also gradually add new ants. And in my free time, I read articles on the Ant Club about the experience with Valera sleeve-cutters. I remember there were bearded times when at the beginning of my hobby I spent hours rummaging through the Ant Club in search of fascinating articles. Yes, perishing then this forum still was alive. Of course, the stories with leaf cutters made the greatest impression on me. I remember that I read many keepers, but stealth posts I remember most of all. Besides, it's to this person that I write with questions about Tata, if any. Valera, thanks for your help. Now every day the progress of ants is becoming more noticeable. They are already actively walking around the outworld in search of leaves, cut it and bring it to the nest, where all the fun happens. Let's disrupt the leaf cutters again, but there is already something to see. As you can see, I cut the ends right behind the leaf processing, and the most attentive can notice changes in the fungus. Pay attention on the growth on the mycelium, which is very well illuminated by the lamp. This is the nutrient mass from the ground leaves, which the mycelium will capture. In the meantime, I'm gradually completing the replanting of the fungus. As you can see, now I don't get chance from it at all. I go just with them. In addition, I add another batch of workers. The queen is very worried in such moments. So far the fungus is still too small for her to live in it, therefore she is wandering in search of shelter. And I don't miss the opportunity to shoot her, because when she hides in a fungus I will very rarely see her. And now the ants are not longer getting a gravy ball, but a whole piece of the bottle so that there is a growth reserve for the mycelium. In just a couple of days you can evaluate the progress of the ants. The fungus is growing, this is a sign that I did everything right, and that the colony started active growth. Now it's up to the little thing. The main thing is to maintain humidity and don't forget to give the ants leaves. At this stage, the fungus can grow several times in one night. It already clearly shows the formation of chambers in which ants and the queen will live in the future, which still can't find a place for itself. And now it's time to feed our ants. It's probably not quite right to call it feeding. Ants don't eat leaves though. This is a new chain substrate for fungus cultivation. But anyway, you can watch this process forever. I never thought that daily under my nose leaf cutters would be doing their chores. After a few more days, I'm ready to implement the last addition of the fungus and the workers to my colony, and then they will already grow on their own, without outside help. And again, the picture has changed dramatically. Now I see a completely different spectacle. Now it's no longer the same microfungus that it was at the beginning. It has become a full-fledged home for ants. However, it still has a long story ahead of it and what we see is far from the limit of its capabilities. For some reason the fungus only grew from one part of the mycelium that I gave to the ants. Perhaps this is due to the fact that there are still not enough workers to process this entire area. Well, let's fix it. 
This time I threw about half a hundred workers without fear, and I planted the last piece of the fungus that I had left for the ants. Let this be the final stage of my help to the colony. There are more ants now, consequently the growth of the fungus will also accelerate. But I don't see any new generations yet. The most I've seen are eggs, so I still have to wait for the last point of successful development of leaf cutters. New native workers. And the artists grew bolder over time. Now when shooting I have to catch them a little bit. Ants are doing great. Finally I got it. It turned out to raise real leaf cutters right at home. Now I give the ants a break from myself. As a final note of my colony's growth history, I will show pictures taken shortly after the last fungus replanting. I always remove the bottom of bottle. The fungus is already stable enough to live without it. And here we have an incredible sight. At each side of the mycelium, ants are busy processing and growing it. And now let me show you how the ants feel now. A lot of time passed, a lot has changed, and to begin with I want to show you how I take care of my colony now. For example, an unpleasant puddle of condensate and fungus waste has accumulated in this area of fungus. I think it's better to remove it. For one, wipe plastic from garbage. There are a lot of ants now, and you need to act quickly so that they don't crawl out. I carefully remove this orange water with a syringe. In addition, I wipe the lid, and watching the ants immediately became more convenient. The fungus has become quite large, and filled the whole container. The ants have long outgrown their nest, but I have not yet connected a new one due to my possible move. All the same, leaf cutters quite strongly tie you to the house, you need to be ready for this. The queen is almost all the time hidden from my eyes by its living anthill, but occasionally I'm lucky to observe it on the surface. Ants have a lot of brood, and by the way they feel great. They filled everything that is possible with the fungus, now they live without changes. In general, the fungus is a very interesting organism, which is even difficult to imagine if you've never seen it. It is in a constant life cycle. The old layers that are located below every second slowly die off and are taken by ants to the trash. And at the top the ants grow new young layers. Because of this, if you look at the growth of the fungus in a highly accelerated shooting, it may seem that it's moving. In fact, that's the way it is. And specially lay out the substrate from the leaves in such a way that when they are overgrown with mycelium, something like an anthill is formed. It turns out that ants with the fungus are in constant symbiosis. The fungus gives them shelter and food, and they help him grow. By the way, yes, if anyone didn't know, ants feed on a special secretions of the fungus, and nothing else. Now it's time to clean up the outworld. There was a lot of rubbish on it. Sometimes leaf catchers don't cut all the leaves, given that they have nowhere to grow, and it simply dries in the outworld. In the meantime, I want to ask you to subscribe to all my social networks, the links to which are in the description. Instagram, Discord, my resources, where you can follow my news and communicate. All links in the description. And I still clean the outworld from the garbage which the leaf catchers nearly fought in the corner.
In the meantime, I prepared the outroad for a new feeding. Now we need to prepare the leaves. I use blackberry because there are a lot of it in my forest and it grows even in winter. So I didn't have any problems with leaves. Just in case, it's worth raising the leaves in water, so as not to bring some kind of trouble with them from the forest. Now just lay the leaves in the outworld. I try to direct them upwards in order to somehow mimic the natural conditions for the ants. Plus it makes the outworld look livelier, and it resembles the tropical forest of South America. A little time passed, and a small group of scouts stumble upon a resource that I gave them. It needs to be studied carefully and determine if these leaves are suitable for the fungus. Finally cut it up and take it home. Plus or minus large soldiers have already appeared in my colony, at least compared to those that were in the beginning. Let me remind you that in a large Ata Mexicana colony soldiers can reach 2 cm in length. For these beautiful ends, I want to express my deep gratitude to my friend Daniel. People asked me many times when I would buy leaf cutters again, and I answered that I wouldn't buy, and I've been honest. I didn't pay for these ends. Daniel spent a lot of nerves to get these ends to me by arranging delivery from Poland. And now I am the happy owner of an incredible colony of leaf cutter ants. Daniel, thank you very much. This is a very valuable gift that I promise to keep with me and on this channel. I don't know how to describe the emotions you get when an ant right in front of you slowly cut off a piece of a leaf, chewing it with its mandibles. An incredible and very harmonious spectacle, which without exaggeration can be watched for hours. Houses, the outroll to these ants can be made into a real jungle. In general, leaf catchers are somehow more reminiscent of nature, probably because of the vegetation that they have to give. Such ants always remind you that somewhere there are incredibly beautiful wild tropical forests. Peace reigns in the ant hill, and there is a greater variety of activities than the ants were used to. Someone is processing the leaves, which will soon be used to grow the fungus. The queen meanwhile is worried and hurries to hide from us in the thickness of the fungus. Like I said, it doesn't come across very often, so I always try to photograph it whenever possible. The fungus looks very unusual. Ants run around its different levels, and if you fantasize a little, you can imagine that this is some kind of ant planet. The leaf catcher's queen is definitely the coolest ant I've ever seen. Not only does it look like it's real from another planet, but it also lays just enormous numbers of eggs that will soon become new ants. The smallest workers are called minima. It's them that you now see, and it's they who are watching the fungus. The end hill is constantly teeming with life. Night, morning, afternoon, evening, the ants don't stop. And I really appreciate the opportunity to watch this life and live next door to them. I really hope you enjoyed today's adventure. 
I went to these ends for a very long time, and finally the line of leaf cut trains was our calm. Thanks for watching this video. I hope Atta Mexicana will appear in my videos more than once, but for now I have many more different stories for you. I also want to remind you about my Discord server, in which I am waiting for all of you. This is an Enstra project. See you!